This game in comparison is an absolute steal and is incredibly pro-consumer. In the sense, Guardians of the Galaxy, unlike its evil brother, is evil brother. I mean, you call it the evil brother, even though it's your most played Steam game with over 144 hours, like, bro. I mean, goddamn, if the Nikki scene doesn't even hit you a little bit, you are a fucking sociopath, my guy. You are... Fucking sociopath, my guy. That's right, man. If you don't shed a tear during the shed, you're a sociopath. I mean, all I want to know is how the fuck did you know? 12, more like 14. Bro, 19's the new 10. What up, motherfuckers? Mama Susan back with another video. And one more common question. Is this because YouTube Rewind got lots of dislikes? No. Please go stub your toe on a Lego, you fucking shoe. But anyway, a while back, Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy came out. And in my opinion, the game is pretty mediocre, to be honest. I mean, at the very least, it's better than Marvel's Avengers, but then again, that ain't exactly a high standard to begin with. Nonetheless, Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy still isn't that great, despite it being better than its quote-unquote evil brother. His evil brother. Well, according to me anyway, because what do I know, right? And besides, we're blessed of a video telling us why Marvel's Guardians of the galaxy is the best thing since sliced bread, which isn't over the top whatsoever. I mean, goddamn, if the Nikki scene doesn't even hit you a little bit, you are a fucking sociopath, my guy. But anyway, the video in question is from a channel called Mischief, who just like yours truly specializes in roasting fanboys. I mean, I don't even hate the guy, despite his recent content being a little repetitive, and him having shitty opinions on video games, among other things, and a strong case of British Titus, but the video in question is a bit of an L in my opinion, and said the video is titled, Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy PC review, the best Marvel game? I'm gonna tell you right now that no, Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy is not the best Marvel game. And to that you might respond with, well, look as if this shit ain't it, then what is the best Marvel game? Well, Jimmy, the answer to that is quite simple, really. For you see, the best Marvel game is easily 2007 Spider-Man 3. <laughs> Looks like it's gonna be a close casket funeral for her, but anyway, I've rambled on for more than enough, so with that said, let's jump into this shit and learn why Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy is the best Marvel game. Kill me. Guardians of the Galaxy is hands down the biggest surprise of 2021 for me. I was not expecting to enjoy this game at all. Yeah, same. I wasn't expecting to like this game at all, and I'm very happy to say that my judgment has not failed me. Like, throughout the entirety of the time that I spent playing this shit with my friend, never have I ever been more tempted to smash my head against the wall as the hours went on playing this, due to reasons that will be addressed as they become relevant. The promotional material for it was undeniably terrible, but I am glad to say that in almost every aspect, Guardians of the Galaxy is an absolute blast, especially when you compare it to the most recent mainline Marvel title, aka Marvel Avengers. I don't think Marvel's Avengers is exactly a high standard to begin with, so... This game in comparison is an absolute steal and is incredibly pro-consumer. In the sense, Guardians of the Galaxy, unlike like his evil brother. His evil brother. Don't get me wrong, Marvel's Avengers is an absolute abortion, but what I find funny is that you call the game quote unquote the evil brother when it's literally your most played Steam game with over 144 hours alone, meaning that you possibly played the shit even more on other platforms. And you even literally made a video defending the game where you said, Originally the game was definitely overpriced, however now that it's on Game Pass, has a permanent discount to £30 and right now is also on sale, definitely makes the game worth the money no matter where you play it. Yeah, no, you couldn't pay me to even touch Marvel's Avengers with a 10-foot pole, regardless if it's on Game Pass or heavily discounted. But again, I find it funny you call the game an evil brother when you blatantly defended the game in the past. Unlike his evil brother, does not try to sell you any microtransactions. And I mean none. It also does not offer any paid XP boosters. Says the guy who literally defended XP boosters. This is simply put a well-paced, single-player, story-driven game that has finally shown us what developers can do with 
Marvel's IPs when Square Enix isn't actively trying to destroy their own games. Aside from the pay to win shit, I think that's just a nice way of sugarcoating the fact that the game is essentially a walking simulator. You know, the type of game the very fanboys you make videos on love to play. Like, dude, I think you're batting for the wrong team here. Now, unlike other reviewers, I'm not going to sit here and make you wait to discuss the combat. Oh my god, dude, thank you so much, you are so considerate. I'm gonna name my firstborn child after you. Something which, from what I can tell, has had pretty mixed reception too, and is the main reason as to why I didn't expect to like this game. I would have personally have loved to be able to play all the Guardians like you play Peter Quill, but the combat system they do have is perfectly fine. The combat system that's implemented is pretty mediocre. The combat segments in the game are pretty much just button mashers that require pretty much no challenge at all, and the other Guardians AI makes them incredibly annoying when they get in your way or need to be constantly revived. And it actually helps with the story of this game later on. In short, you control the other Guardians. It's just more in the command sense rather than the usual third person way we usually see. And this later on helps to make you feel like the leader of the group, aka one of the main focuses of the story. Oh my god, it helps you feel like a leader in the story. I don't know about you, man, but that just sounds like high levels of copium that you can't play as the other Guardians. In a game literally called Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy. But hey, what do I know, right? My story. So we're in the next part of the video, we just talks about elemental abilities and dialogue during combat, which I don't really have a problem with, so with the power of editing, we'll be fast forwarding this shit. Each Guardian has four abilities to gradually unlock as you progress through the game, and unlike most of the people say you can't just button smash their abilities on higher difficulties. There are quite a few similarities between the abilities for every Guardian, however they do still manage to remain unique thanks to the being tailored to each individual Guardian, and trust me, you will quickly be finding your favorite combos of abilities for each enemy type. When it comes to what you can unlock with each other, there are yet again standard four abilities to unlock, but you also unlock elemental abilities to grasp any skill points throughout the campaign, all of which are not actually necessary to defeat the enemies, they are meant to specialize in defeating. You can easily kill elementally protected enemies without using a specific elemental ability, that's meant to counter them, and it should negate the entire purpose of having elemental attacks. If you are going to have enemies that are meant to be defeated using special attacks, then you need to make it so that you actually need to use those attacks in order to take them down. During combat, the guardians will rarely stop talking as well, and that would be perfectly fine in my opinion if those lines plus entire conversations didn't often repeat themselves. Because it's not at all like I was taking an eternity to get through this game. I managed to beat the game in just over 15 hours. You know, man, I think that's the largest surprise of the entire video that you didn't spend over 144 hours playing it. All of which I enjoyed, and all of which were worth the $60 price tag. Unfortunately, I can't say the same, but after that, he makes a fair point about the game limiting the music, so we'll be skipping that too. One thing I do almost entirely hate about the combat is huddles. A small event you start and if you choose the right dialogue option will boost your entire team as well as playing music. Not only do I hate how it doesn't actually fit into gameplay and feels like an unnecessary halt to get normally head to battles, but from what I can tell it's also the main way that you get music to play during combat. And when the soundtrack from games has got down huge force guns the galaxies is, it feels like a completely wasted opportunity to heavily limit the music to this degree. I mean they put so much bloody effort into the music for this game to the point there's an entire studio album made just for the open scene. When it comes to the graphics of this game, Idos Montreal has crafted the first game I can confidently say has next gen graphics. I have not seen a single low quality texture through both of my playthroughs. The ray tracing implementation is brilliant, however I do have a few complaints. At times the game does have a problem due to the odd service here and there being a little too reflective, but that is definitely something you won't really care about whilst playing the game. But you know why you will care about? Visual and technical problems. Throughout the 8 hours or so I played this garbage with my friend on his Xbox, we encountered a whole slew of bugs and glitches like where the frame rate would dip anytime we encountered a combat segment, textures would flicker, and the audio would sometimes cut out or be too quiet. Maybe you personally didn't encounter any of these problems, but they were common enough online for you to at least mention them. For the most part, as I said a second ago, the ray tracing implementation is the best I've seen outside of Minecraft RTX. The environments in this game are also nothing but the best of the best. It is hard to find a modern game with such stunning environments. That's got to be one of the most narrow-minded statements I've heard in a while. To me, it sounds like you haven't played that many games to get the notion that it's hard to find games with great environments. I mean, literally look at any game released by Ubisoft alone. The gameplay in those games tend to be incredibly mediocre, but they definitely blow their load on the graphics and environments. And this is mainly thanks to how Idos and Montreal have fully embraced the alien setting of the Guardians of the Galaxy franchise. No shit, Guardians of the Galaxy is a sci-fi which takes place throughout space. What did you expect? Nah, but next he gushes over the graphics more. And hair. Hair. Fucking hair. I know that sounds like a really weird thing to bring up, but after the horrifyingly bad hair in Marvel Avengers, seeing Gamora, Rocket, and Cosmo in this game with high quality hair slash fur fills me with joy. Fills me with joy. Wait, what well, scene? High quality fur fills you with joy. You know, guys, this dude might actually be a closeted furry and he may not even realize it. I mean, that would make way too much sense. And I'm so glad Idos Montreal put so much effort into literally everything they possibly could do. 
Oh yeah, dude, they put in so much effort in everything they could do that you literally cannot play as the other four main characters. Like, bro, the game is called Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy. Guardians as in with an S. But grammatical lessons aside, the game has also issues I mentioned before. And the AI literally rode the fucking short bus of a cliff. Thankfully, I does Montreal successfully did all this without screwing you over with poor optimization. The optimization for this game is fantastic. With DLSS set the balance, with all settings maxed out and ray tracing also maxed out, I was getting around 45 to 60 FPS in combat. Bro, how the hell is 45 to 60 frames per second good optimization? And this dude was using DLSS in a RTX 3070, which is pretty high end. Regardless of settings, literally anything under a consistent 60 frames per second is objectively eye cancer. Yet he's fine with that. Like, how is that good? Which if you've ever played any games with ray tracing on PC to a similar degree to this, then you'd know that is pretty impressive when you compare it to other games. I mean, if you enjoy playing slideshows, then sure, but I'm gonna skip to the part where he talks about lip syncing because I don't have an issue where he talks about graphical settings. This game easily has the best facial animation I've seen in a game this year, and the same can be said for the game's lip syncing. Keep that in mind because just in a little bit where he shows scenes of characters talking, this supposedly amazing lip syncing will be shown in full effect. I meant it when I said the developers got almost everything right when it comes to this game. And you're wrong. Refer to my previous points I've made throughout the video. The only issue I could possibly find with the animations of the eyes of characters, since every now and then they look dead, which does create some candy value effect for me. However, I won't make it very clear that what I just said about the candy value effect is for me, and is a nitpick because I'm genuinely struggling to find critiques for this aspect of the game. I'd say at least 99% of people will not even notice that the eyes appear dead in some scenes. The incredible animations, lip syncing, and voice acting all come together to form a story that you can genuinely get invested into. Sure, at times it does get corny as well as cringy. Corny and cringy. I wonder what that's reminding me of. Fills me with joy. Especially during those huddle events and some of Peter's speeches, but the game does it in a self-aware manner. The Guardians will actively mock Peter for his terrible speeches, and it helps make the story as good as it is. This is one of the best Marvel stories I have played through slash watched. Every single character has some form of genuine character development, like Drax finally accepting his family's death. Are you hurt, Papa? I swear to god, dude, I did not edit that shit in. Like, the first scene this guy decides to use as an example of the game having good character development is the one where he didn't edit out the fucking Discord pings. Talk to us, love. Guys, remember, if you laugh at all during this, you're a sociopath. You are... Fucking sociopath, my guy. How is this the best part of the video? This motherfucker indirectly made one of the funniest clips I've seen in a while, but not editing out the goddamn Discord pings. I will cherish the time that we had. And not resent the time that we lost. Alright, I'm sorry, I had to do it. You know, man, you're right, I am a sociopath. Shall love and honor you both. Always. The characters feel human, they feel real. I mean, goddamn, if the Nikki scene doesn't even hit you a little bit, you are a fucking sociopath, my god. You are fucking sociopath, my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my fucking god. Oh my, did you hear that? The bloody British one can know that mischief has called the sociopaths, I Watch all this bullshit you spewing, I Fuck this, I'ma go eat some crispy, crunchy, munchy, crack, jack, snack, lip, nibble, crisp, snap, crack, and pop, West Bull Chas for highest, Gwyn's jovely, jubly, lovely delights. Yeah, I don't know what the fuck any of that was. For some reason, I thought it'd be funny to talk in an over-exaggerated, stereotypical British accent, which for whatever reason changed to Irish in some parts. I don't know, it must be the retardation rubbing off. I feel like sitting through this video has made me an actual sociopath. Fucking kill me. I don't care if it's not real. I need things to go back to how they were, even if it means making the same stupid cake. You know, dude, maybe the cake is the thing keeping them um, six feet under, but damn, dude, isn't this lip syncing phenomenal? Magic or anything doesn't bring anyone back, but... You know, it's, it's a gesture. 
a small thing in the face of a very bad thing. Bro, his mouth barely moved. But overall, I don't get why he's showing all these scenes if he wants people to buy the game if these highlights might be a selling point. Like the dude didn't even bother putting in a disclaimer about spoilers. But there is something I do have to do alone. Oh my god, man, I'm on the verge of tears. She pulled the candle and the cake that she pulled out of a sewage pipe. And said candle has some of the worst fire effects I've ever seen. And it's clear Idis Montreal understood and cared about telling a good story. Because characters like drags aren't just played off for laughs in this like they are in the movies. They actually have a purpose other than comic relief. And you can genuinely feel sorry for them. I feel genuinely sorry you made this video as it's been extremely painful to sift through this shit. Like if you want to go ahead and call me a sociopath, go ahead. If you wanna be the embodiment of that one Wojak meme where the girls are like, Oh my god, I can't believe he didn't cry during the Titanic, except replace the context with Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy. Go right ahead, dude. Go cry your little bitch tears. Because of emotional scenes like this one. Again, if these scenes are so integral to the game, why are you showing like 90% of them? On the off chance that anyone watching this video wants to subject themselves to this shit, I'll do Mischief's job and cut the following scene out. Rocket also has a scene like this. I can't believe you did that for us. Hey, a friend needed help. Bro, how the fuck was a coked out raccoon with hydrophobia emotional? Like Rocket probably smelled like a wet dog after that. Oh my bad, I forgot I'm a professionally diagnosed sociopath. And the reason why that scene is as powerful as it is is because during the previous parts of the game, Rocket was a selfish asshole just like he was in the films. And he gradually opened up to the Guardians, talking about how he was tortured in water and that's why he's scared of it. So although that scene can be seen as really fucking mushy it is still powerful the fact that such a selfish asshole is able to overcome his fear to save a few people is great character development yeah hopefully you can get the same kind of treatment and stop making retarded ass statements about video games and other things with this holier than thou attitude like come on guys let's get square enix to make the mischief dlc for marvel's avengers which i'm sure will at least double his playtime oh and also you're a walking contradiction especially thanks to the fact that i just montreal worked on this they didn't just make it feel like a switch was flipped and then all of a sudden, Rocket was no longer an asshole. It happened gradually through a 15 hour campaign, and that is why it's so great. They didn't rush anything. They didn't rush anything. They sure as shit rushed the game out though, with its numerous problems. This game takes its time telling a story, and it doesn't just purely do this through cutscenes like most PlayStation exclusives do, but through the gameplay as well. Merging both cutscene and gameplay to show character development is truly brilliant. There are so many slightly hidden lines of dialogue that absolutely did not need to be implemented but are. Pretty sure that way's a dead end. Oh god, not the fucking Discord pings again. Like, I really don't get why he couldn't just edit them out, when it would have taken less than a minute. But to not waste your time, the following clip he uses has another three fucking pings. Quality content. And it's great that they are here because it once again seriously helps with the story's deep messages and continuous character development throughout the story. And seriously helps with the story's deep messages and continuous character development. How the fuck does that contribute to the quote unquote deep messages and character development? Like the clip you showed a moment ago consisted of the crackhead raccoon mocking the player for not listening to him. Like, am I the only one confused on how the fuck that contributes to anything? I don't no, it could be just that you use a shitty example to try and prove your point. Or you've run out of ways to suck this game's cock even more and are grasping at straws. And the decisions you make in the game do actually affect what happens later in the story. Something you'd be surprised to find out doesn't actually happen that often in games with dialogue options. They aren't small changes either. At the beginning of the game, you choose to either hide illegal materials or to hide an illegal llama. If you choose to hide the illegal materials, you will later end up with guidance rockets. And if you choose to hide the llama, you don't get those weapons upgraded 
upgrades, but you do get a smaller fine from the Nova Corp. You know, considering this man gets filled with joy at the sight of high quality fur, I'm gonna take a guess and say he went with a llama. Don't let his gameplay deceive you. Fills me with joy. And there are plenty of more things like this in the game, but I don't want to spoil everything in the game. Says the motherfucker who literally spoiled several fucking cutscenes back to back a few minutes ago, like what? And if you guys couldn't tell by the title, or couldn't tell from what I've been saying, I highly recommend you give Idis Montreal's Guardians of the Galaxy game a shot. Yeah, no, I'm more than fucking good, gonna have to pass on that one, Chief. Because this is finally a multi-plat Marvel game that doesn't actively screw over its player base, and it's got one of the best PC ports I've seen in a long time. So with all that being said, we have finally come to the end of my review for the Guardians of the Galaxy game. Please don't forget to do all the things YouTubers love to bet you to do, aka check out my Discord server, follow me on Twitter, as well as like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, I don't think I'll be doing any of the things you've just mentioned, and if this video is anything to go off by, please, for the love of God, do not review any more video games, I swear to God. Oh, God, oh, no, 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 more. Please am I suffering. Overall, I think we've all learned something today, you know? Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy is hands down the greatest video game of all time. Nothing will ever come close. And I'm an officially diagnosed sociopath. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Case fucking closed. You are... Fucking sociopath, my guy. Nah, but in all seriousness, that's gonna do it for this video. This fucking response was an absolute nightmare to get through. Like, on numerous occasions, I felt like I was gonna get an aneurysm with some of his mental gymnastics. So if you could ease my pain by liking the video and subscribing as well as joining my Discord, that'd be great. But thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. <laughs>